Hi, this is just a short video, and it is going to be slightly different than my usual project and teardown videos. And you might have guessed from the title of this video what this video is all about. Anyway, I bought a Samsung Q6F 55-inch TV a few days ago. One of the reasons I bought this Samsung TV, besides its superb picture quality, is because it is on the compatibility list for Xfinity's aka Comcast's latest streaming app. This means I don't have to have a set-top box from Comcast, nor do I need a uh, streaming device such as Roku. Upon setting up the wireless network for streaming though, I noticed that the wireless connection gets interrupted once in a while, so it appears that the connection was quite poor. At first I thought, okay, it might just be the location of where I put my TV, as it is on a different floor as my wireless router. But my other connected devices don't seem to have any problems connecting to the internet, and the reception reported by other devices in the same area is actually quite good. And worse yet, while in the setup process, my router, which is an Aris SVG2482AC, started to behaving weirdly, and its 5 GHz band became totally unusable, and no devices could connect to it anymore. It also appeared that my wireless router had locked up, and I could not even get to the login screen. At first, I didn't give it too much thought, and thought it might just be a coincidence. So I rebooted my router, which is, by the way, quite painful, as I do have a battery backup. So I had to remove the battery to totally shut it down and restart over again. Speaking of the battery, this router has some built-in battery calibration feature. When you first put in a battery, it starts its calibration cycle over quite a few days by slowly discharging and charging it a few times to accurately measure its capacity. Anyway, I also changed the connection from wireless to a wired Ethernet connection, thinking that the wireless might be flaky. And again, it worked for about 20 minutes, and then the connection started dropping again. And also, the router's built-in configuration web page became very sluggish, so something clearly was not right. So what is it? Well, the culprit is the host name Samsung chose to name its devices. Instead of a meaningful and unique name, or simply just a Samsung TV, it used the reserved name localhost. Everyone that is familiar with computer networks knows that this is a big no-no. Localhost is reserved for the loopback address only. So clearly this localhost hostname was the root cause of the intermittent connection issues I was having. This essentially caused a denial of service attack on my router and bringing down the entire wireless network. Unfortunately, I combed through my TV's manuals and could not find a single place where I could change this default hostname. There is a manual option for changing the TV name, but it is not reflected in the hostname that the router sees. So the only way to remediate this problem is to change the IP assignment from the router to static or reserved instead of the default dynamic for this Q6FN QLED TV. And with this change, the TV worked nicely with other network devices afterwards as expected. And as I mentioned earlier, the picture quality of this TV is excellent despite having this annoying firmware issue. By the way, the firmware I have on this TV is the latest according to Samsung's website. And that firmware is actually from October this year. Again, I'm really puzzled since this is a consumer product and typical consumers might not know what causes their new TV not to work on their network. Furthermore, because of the host name is hard-coded to local host, it would be even more problematic if you have two or more Samsung TVs on the same network. Clearly, there is some explanation to do on Samsung's part, and out of curiosity, I googled this problem, and it appeared that many people have had the same problem on many different uh, Samsung TVs over the past couple of years. And it does not appear that Samsung had acknowledged or addressed this concern adequately yet. 
So if you are a Samsung software engineer or you know someone who is familiar with the Samsung TV's hardware, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Thanks for watching this video. I will catch up with you next time.